I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie. Our question this week is, what kind of soil do I have, and why does it make a difference? Well, your soil can make all the difference in the world to what you're planting, especially if you're a farmer or a would-be farmer. But even if you're just looking to put in a simple home landscape, a tree that does perfectly fine in East Austin may croak almost overnight in West Austin. So knowing your soil is indeed very important. You can learn a little bit just by digging a hole. You may not be able to get the shovel into the ground at all, meaning you may have heavy clay or rock, or you may be able to dig a three-foot hole with ease. I know you've heard of having your soil tested through the Texas AgriLife Extension Service, which will give you great information about the nutrients in your soil. But soil texture is also important. You used to have to go to the library or your county extension office and look at soil survey maps in order to find out about your soil. But recently, the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service uploaded all of their soil mapping data to their website. So now you can go to the site and get an entire soil survey built just for the area that you define. Although the website's a bit cumbersome if you're not a systems analyst geek, it's very powerful and very useful, especially if you're looking to purchase a piece of land and start a vineyard or an orchard or some other business venture. If you can't remember the link, just Google Web Soil Survey and the NRCS site will come up. Our pick of the week is Barbados Cherry, Malpighia glabra. This native plant is great as an accent shrub or screen. Like most plants, it needs a little extra water during the first year or so, but it's very drought tolerant once established. There are dwarf varieties available, but common Barbados cherry usually gets four to six feet tall and has a spreading habit, so give it plenty of room to grow. The small flowers, which bloom in spurts from April through October, look very similar to the flowers of crepe myrtle. Barbados cherry produces a lovely bright red fruit that's edible and high in vitamin C, but quite tart. This plant performs well in part shade to full sun and is evergreen during most winters. In a harsh winter, it might lose its leaves, but will bounce back when spring arrives. It's adaptable to most soils, but does require good drainage. The delicate mauve pink flowers attract butterflies and hummingbirds, but its bright red fruit is a truly wonderful food source for the birds during the hot months of summer. Those fruits and the tender leaves may also attract other wildlife to your yard, and deer absolutely love them. It does have a rather thicket-like growth habit, so unless you have a true wildscape, you may want to prune Barbados cherry to keep it in shape and looking less messy. To do in your garden this week, it's time to side dress those vegetables with a little compost or fertilizer to perk them up a bit. Keep your fruit trees well watered. Watering them this year will ensure a good fruit crop next year. Be sure also to water your new trees and shrubs that you might have planted this spring, and also your perennials. Until they're established, they need a good, deep watering once a week. Stick your finger in the soil to make sure that you're getting water down to a depth of at least six inches. That water will then percolate down to about 12 inches. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions or plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.